He said, everybody's going to give you money, but you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're never going to have to borrow. You're going to have all the money. Right? I said that right. He said, you're not, yeah, I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. How about that? Okay, so God, God spoke, made a covenant. He said, but this is the thing. You, if you really love me, you got to obey me. What did Jesus say in John 15? He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And he said, you'll ask whatever you wish, whatever you will, whatever you desire, says sometimes. And he said, it will be given to you, period. So your joy may be full. That sounds selfish, doesn't it? But he said, it's so your joy can be full and also that my father would be glorified, right? Okay, so those are the two, the two things and the one thing that they match the Deuteronomy 28. Okay, so God has connected himself with us and he has chosen us. We haven't chosen him. This whole thing is rigged. God knew that you'd all be here, that we would all be here, and that we would get to a saturation point in disgust to where we would actually pray. And when we pray, you heard Captain Kevin say, we got to believe when we pray, or let's not pray at all. I'm not praying unless we're going to get it, right? So we spent four years learning how to take something that was stolen. And we saw a miracle. Everybody in the White House says it. Everybody in the White House knows it was stolen, but everybody also knows that it was a miracle. That's out of their own mouths, okay? They think it's a miracle that God had his way. The president says it's a, it's a miracle. It's God's plan, Amen. right? Okay, we have not heard this kind of uh, language in a while. All right, so we lay aside the, the sides. <laughs> and we think not in colors. We don't think in, we think in life or death. Okay, so God says life and death has been given to you this day. Choose what you want. Cursings or blessings, the tongue. Cursing, blessings. Okay, right? We see all that. But do we discern that the devil's on the run? You see, it's not enough for me to have the devil found out. It's not enough for me to finally have somebody rule in our favor or in your favor and say, you've been stolen from. It's like, no, no, not so easy. I, the guilty, I like the guilty, uh, you know, verdict, but not so fast, judge. I want payback with interest. And, you know, I'm $1,000 an hour. And so I want... I want the devil to feel the pain that the body of Christ has felt. Okay, it's not enough. Now listen to me, please listen to me. Is Jesus Christ would never give up on you. Jesus Christ has already voted for you before you were born. He's done everything as though you were going to accept him. That was a liability, but he did it out of obedience to the Father. But he did it because he loves the Father, but he also loves us. He said that in John 17. In John 17, he took what him and the Father discussed. He said that. He said, share with them the same glory that me and you shared before we lit up the universes together. Is what it says in Aramaic. Now think about that. He's talking about the relationship he had with, with his Father. And he's saying, they can share in the same glory. Now what does that mean? What that means is it's not enough to just get a guilty verdict. It's payback. What's the payback? The payback is that we share in the same glory according to scripture, not according to my theology. It's not preached because it's scary. Think about it, how scary it is for Jesus to call us friends. fellow heirs. What does that mean? We don't know because if we did, we'd all be prospering. We'd all be in health. Now, I'm not saying that as a gospel, gospel of prosperity. I'm saying that as common sense. Because you look at Abraham. 
He said, you know what, God? He met God. It was chapter 11. They made a covenant. He met God, okay? Two chapters later, it's, what does it say in chapter 13? And Abraham was very rich. Well, what happened? This is before the law. Okay, so the law comes and it says, okay, you're going to be the head, not the tail. Every nation's going to know that I'm your God. Okay, they're going to see it. What does that mean? Well, it takes sickness away from the midst of you. Okay, so you have Abraham that was not operating in any of that. You have, you, you have uh, Noah, Moses operating under the law and the people of Israel, and they, they still didn't get it. Okay, so Jesus comes and he says exactly, exactly the same verbiage is in Deuteronomy 28. He says it again in John 15. This time he says, you know, me and the father are really tight. I'm your representative. I'm the way, the truth, and life. He said, the same relationship that me and the father have, you have now. Okay, that had never been said like that before. But yet it was the same verbiage as in Deuteronomy 28 because it had to do with covenant, right? Okay, so this is my introduction. Just hold off. I got to burn this extra fuel out and then we'll get right into the cruise control. Okay, so, so Jesus also mentioned unity. And he said that, that the unity that me and you share, he said, um, they share it with us. Okay, what does that mean? That means that you agree with the Godhead. Well, what does that look like? We don't know yet. Okay, we don't know yet because if you would discern that, then we would be getting together and praying for every cabinet member and we would be confessing that it is time for the devil to feel pain. It's not enough that he was caught. But because we don't do anything, nothing's done, which is not correct according to Scripture. According to Scripture, we've got a covenant, and the Lord said, if you ask, you're going to receive. If you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, the door shall be open for you. Nothing else. No other uh, italicized words or, you know, Greek and Hebrew and homebrew or whatever. There's nothing to, to it's, it's, you're going to pray and you're going to get it. Okay, period. So that's the way I look at God. It's like I have a connection with God like you do, not as a minister or as, you know, anything. I have a relationship with God because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to bat for me. He's the commander of my faith. And he, I, I don't want to preach this message because I'm not supposed to preach this message tonight. I'm supposed to preach it tomorrow night. But, but God started it and he finishes it. And he's... He's clicking over to the finishing mode now, but we're not discerning it, and I'll tell you why. It's because we've been beat up so badly, and if you listen to the words of Jesus, it seems like too good to be true. That's it. That's the gospel. The word gospel means too good to be true. It's good news. Okay, so I attach myself not to the middleman, not to the, the paper or the, the just, you know, the second hand. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ like you do, and I can go to the Father in his name, and it says, ask whatever you desire, and you shall have it. He said, from now on, he said, you, up until now, you've asked me for snacks, and you know, you've argued, and you want to be seated next to me, but he said, there's coming a day when you will go to the Father yourself. Well, I just want a newsflash, that day has already happened, is, is I can go to the Father myself. Not as an apostle or a five-fold minister or no full minister or a non-prophet, whatever. I go as a person who needs God, who was chosen by God. I didn't choose him. Do you understand that he found you? He did all this before you were born. And he is more excited than the church is right now. And so he sends people that are crazy enough to brag about him for four hours. See, because you got to brag about your God. Yeah. Because the devil is going to get nervous. Yes. Because he knows that you can't stop people that brag about God. Right. That, that testify about his faithfulness. Listen, your body is being healed right now. Yep. Your body's being healed right now. You don't need me to blow on you. You don't need to give an offering. You, you are being healed right now. You want to know why? Because he sent his word and he healed you. So he sends me to remind you of what he sent. Come on. It's, it's raining. It's raining in here. Okay. 
<laughs> all right, so that was my introduction. Thank you for all coming, all you coming. I just uh, was introduced to the, um, what's, what's the hillbilly, hillbilly version or is it the southern, what is it? The the y'all version. And so I, y'all is used like every other word in this translation. I was like, I was like, okay, man. All right. Gee. Okay. So tonight I want to talk to you about something that is, has come out in science and um, it really struck me because I, I'm, I, I really study a lot of the science and everything that's coming out now. 